Hi guys, so yesterday I posted a picture of four sewing machines. They're the four I'm gonna show you how to thread up today. Um, they are either vintage or they're found next to a dustbin or uh, I've got one brand new that I paid 180 euros for. I think if you were to add up how much my sewing machines cost me, all four of them, I think I spent less than uh, less than 250 euros on four sewing machines, uh, mainly because they've either been found next to a bin or they're second hand or I've been given them. So they're the four we're going to be looking at. Um, we've got a Singer Starlet, which is the little pretty yellow one with lots of flowers on it. We've got um, my Modern Brother, which is the plain white one that looks modern. Um, I can't remember the number for that. I'll find that for you. One, Mr. Pickling. I call him Mr. Pickling. I found that one next to a dustbin. It's German. That is all I know about it. I've tried Googling. I've tried researching. I can't find any more information on it. It's Mr. Pickling. Um, and the last one, my brother, Compal Star, which I've had. That's the machine I learned to sew on. It was my mum's machine. Um, and I love it. Out of all four machines, that is the one that I prefer to use for anything and everything. It is a beast of a machine and it will sew anything. Um, although if you're using, if you use the right needle and make sure you've got your machine straight, um, set up right and straight, you'd be amazed at what you can get, almost any machine to sew. Um, and hopefully I'm going to show you some of the hints and tricks that I know. Right, uh, let's get cracking. First machine we're gonna do is the most modern one, the brother that I can't remember the number of. <laughs> hey guys, so this is the first machine. This is a brother XN1700. Catchy name, right? Um, I brought this machine six months ago because my faithful favorite machine broke down on me. Um, but to give it a bit of credit, it is 30 years old and it's the first time it's died after having its own upholstery fabric, furniture covers, jeans, leather, literally everything I threw at it and it was a student that broke it because they jammed a needle into the mechanism. Um, so I brought this. I tested a Singer, uh, the Singer Heavy Duty because I wanted, I was after a semi-professional machine because I can't, I, what, I couldn't afford a, a professional machine which is ideally what I needed. So I brought this. Um, and the Singer Heavy Duty and this, when I compared the two, I went and test drove both, both of them. Um, the Singer Heavy Duty was not what I was expecting it to be. It, it did what I expect. It did what I wanted it to do. I took a sample of fabric that I would usually sew. Um, but it was expensive. It was 400 euros. But I thought, well, I can't afford a, a professional machine because they're thousands. And I don't want a machine that can't handle what I need it to do. Um, and the guy that was fixing my machine sells brothers and I went and had a look at what they had and I said look this is my situation I need a machine that works you've told me mine isn't repairable for now um, what have you got and this is what they offered me and when I compared this to the singer this it runs smoother it sews just the same the only difference is uh, a, a smaller selection of stitches um, and a massive price reduction. This was 180 euros instead of 400. I've just had a look on the Brother website and you can't get this exact model. They've got an LS14 or something that looks very similar and I think that's probably their new range. Um, my main recommendation is if you are buying a brand new machine, test them. Uh, a Singer have a very good name but I don't think the modern machines live up to the name anymore. I think Singer has sold out. Um, Brother are still good. Engines are still good. This will still go through. I say engine. Motors are still good. This sews through anything and everything that I need it to. And it cost me 180 euros. So if you're thinking about buying a machine, I would say have a look at a Brother. If I could buy anything, I'd buy a Husqvarna. Um, because I think Husqvarna is a lovely machine, but they again are expensive. Their basic machine is 400 euros, but they are worth it, um, in my humble opinion. Looking at the machines that have come through when I've been teaching students, Beninas look good, um, Brothers, Husqvarna's, 
I wouldn't buy a Singer. I just wouldn't. Little sell cheap machines. Um, they're all right. If you're looking to try out and see if you actually enjoy sewing, they will get you started. But don't expect them to hem a pair of jeans. They won't. They're not powerful enough. Um, they're just, they're not great. Um, yeah, I, I just wouldn't bother personally. I would, if I was you, I would spend a little bit more money and for all for the basically the same price, get this machine or an, a, 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 another basic brother or a Benina. I wouldn't go and get the little machines. They're, they're just not designed for a lot of heavy duty sewing. They, or any, a lot of sewing full stop, to be honest. Um, if you've got one, great, use it. Use it till it breaks. But beware, they can't be fixed. Nine times out of ten, the modern machines can't be fixed. This, when it dies, won't be able, I won't be able to fix it because they're not designed to be fixed. Like a lot of modern machinery, they're just not designed to be fixed, which is why, in preference, I prefer older machines. Um, at the time, I needed to know what I had worked, so this is what I brought. If I'd had more time and more flexibility, I would have just shopped around until I found a decent vintage heavy duty machine that would do what I wanted it to do. Um, and that would be my advice. Buy, uh, buy a second hand machine, take it to, uh, well, my sewing machine, fix a man. When I told him I wanted to buy a second man machine, said, why do you want to do that? You can't get the parts for them. Well, buy two. <laughs> that's what I've done. My brother that's broken, I went on eBay. Within half an hour, I'd found another one that was broken in a different way, and I've brought that, and it's currently sitting in the UK waiting for me to go and get it, and that will be spare parts for my machine. That is my advice. <laughs> Buy two of the same machine and keep one as spares for the other. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but they don't break down. That's the first time, that's the first part that's had to be replaced on that in 30 years. And that's a machine that has had heavy usage if you get a vintage machine that has just sat in somebody's house it's barely been used don't get pulled into the trap of buying a brand new machine and thinking it's going to be the best thing since sliced bread um yeah or just you know take someone with, around with you that knows what they're looking for when they're looking at sewing machines um if you'd like a new machine um and I did a lot of research as well when I was looking at sewing machines and Singer just aren't coming up trumps anymore, guys. They're just not. They've sold out. Their machines are cheap. They break. They feel tacky. They feel horrible. This still feels a bit cheap and tacky, but the motor purrs like a kitten. Anyway, on to threading this bad boy up. I'm going to alter the camera angle so you can see what I'm doing and I will show you how to thread it up. Okay, guys, so... I'm going to show you firstly how to wind your bobbin in on. Right, this is a bobbin. Some machines have bobbin cases, some just have straight up bobbins and they're not all the same. So make sure you've got the right one for your machine. Um, it's a little bit tricky if there was none with your machine. Normally, when you buy a machine, there should be at least one bobbin with it. And as usual, there is a diagram on top showing you how to do this. But... If you're the kind of person that needs to see it sort of visually in a video, this is how you do it. So behind the hook, you always loop it round like that. So that the threads are going to cross over. So you go from the front, from the front, round the back, and then back over again. And then wind and then wrap it round your bobbin. Cut off the excess. Push it over. Make sure you've got it plugged in, unlike me. And once you've pushed it over, some machines you have to pull something out or you have to loosen something in the balance wheel. This one, you just push it over. Put your foot down. And what that means is that your needle isn't going up and down. Now, if it does this, it's, it's irritating. Just take it off. 
It's just because your thread is slipping round. If it slips, just wrap a bit more thread around your bobbin and give it another shout. Now you don't have to fill it all the way up. If you're only doing a little bit of sewing, just put a little bit on. Don't waste more thread than you need to. Um, but that's that. That's how you put the bobbin on and get the, the thread on the bobbin. Take it off, push it over to one side, lift it off, cut your thread. And now we're going to put it in underneath. This is a top loading machine. Top loading machines tend not to have um, a bobbin case. I've not seen one with a bobbin case. And you'll find that most machines have a diagram showing you how to do this. Okay. So I'm going to do that again for you. Thread unwinding counterclockwise, drop it in. There's a little hook in there that I'm just going to pull my thread round and pass. And that's that, it. that's it. It's done, it's ready to go down there. So moving on to up top, there's a metal hook here and there is a nice little diagram for me to follow again. So number one, behind the metal hook. Number two, following the arrows down here. Number three, back up. Number four is hidden. There's a, a metal arm in here. You can, might be able to just see it. Pull it around like that. Back down here, there's a little metal hook there. Tick. And then, just going to lick the end of my thread to make sure I can get it through the needle. I'm going to drop my presser foot down to make it easier for me to thread my needle up. Through the little hole, if you need to put your glasses on, put your glasses on. Apparently I can't do this one. If it won't go through, snip it off. Because I'm 9 times out of 10. There we go, with a freshly snipped end, you'll get it through. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my thread in my left hand. doesn't matter if you're left or right handed, it's how a machine is set up. So hold your top thread in your left hand. Turn the balance wheel over here towards you. And you should see a thread come round and catch the thread underneath. Just give it a gentle tug. Pull them both through. Put your little cover back on. Lift your presser foot up. Get the bottom thread underneath the presser foot and your top thread over the top of it. And that's it. Your machine is ready to sew. Okay, so the next machine we're looking at is my other brother, uh, which is an, an electronic Compal Star. Um, in its day, this was a pretty snazzy machine. And as far as I'm concerned, it's still a snazzy machine, even broken. It's still my snazzy machine, and I love this machine. Um, the main difference to my other brother is it's a metal body. It's a lot heavier, and you'll tend to find the... The more heavy duty machines have a metal body. As it, I can regulate the stitch length. Um, I can regulate my zigzag width. It goes slow and fast. Oh yeah, baby. We can accelerate on this machine. Um, I've got two positions for my bobbin. I've got this and I've got this. Um, but bobbins, they are completely different to the other one. It also has... A bobbin case. Ta da! Alright. I'm going to change the camera angle so you're focusing on the bobbin and the bobbin case rather than my beautiful face. And we will get cracking with this. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to wind on your bobbin. Um, don't try and put the bobbin from a different machine into a different machine. Some have the same size and the same shape and the same type, but unless you know what kind of bobbin you're after, don't do it. Your machine just won't work. Right, so this one, you push it over. It's the same as the other brother. They both, they both seem to automatically know that you've pushed your thread over. Right, this one, it's just a simple round the front, round the back. Um, 
so your thread is crossing over again it provides like a it provides a certain amount of tension i've got thread everywhere what's going on there we go that's better right wrap it around your bobbin just like before So like I said, my thread comes from here, it goes round the front, round the back, and then to my bobbin, same as before. Can you hear the difference in the machine? It's just a nicer quality and nicer sounding machine. That was slow speed, are you ready for the fast? Oh yeah, I love this machine. Right, okay, bobbin case. So your bobbin case is a little bit different. Same as before, you want your thread to be in the position where it's unwind unwinding anti-clockwise. Put it in, there's a little slot here. You're gonna pull your thread down through the slot behind this little metallic arm and down to this little hook right here. Now, bobbin cases have a little flappy arm. Pull your little flappy arm out and that stops your bobbin from falling out and you want your thread when to when it falls to just so when you jangle it just for it to just drop a little bit and then you know the tension on your bobbin case is right if it falls too much or not at all you need to alter this screw right here with some of those nice little funky small screwdrivers that you get with your sewing machine okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and down here, I'm going to push my machine back so that you can see what I'm doing. There's a little notch here that fits with this little art, this little sticky out bit here. And you want those two to line up nicely. So we're going to put my bobbin in like that. Leave my thread like this. Up top. Now on this machine I can do either. It makes no difference. Um, but I found that if I do that then I don't have to and take my thread out every time and I just leave it as it is so I tend to use that one more right behind the metal hook down the front back up my metal arms already up but if you can't see it turn your balance wheel till you can basically think about it as a backwards N right you're doing reverse backwards N down behind this hook down behind that hook and then Thread your needle up, if you can't, snip it, put your glasses on so that you can see what you're doing, which is what I am currently doing, pinch it between your finger and your thumb, and then you are just going to thread it up, and that is your machine threaded up, so round this hook at the back, down this side, back up this side, backwards end, behind this hook, behind this hook, through your needle. Hold this in your left hand, does not matter whether you are left or right handed. Turn the balance wheel towards you. You should see, ideally, in an ideal world, a thread pass your bobbin case and pick up. A nice little tuck, just tug it gently. And it should just pull it up or it's going to get tangled like mine just has. <laughs> right, let's try that one more time. Third time lucky, huh? Oh, there we go. It's tangled it, but it's pulled it through. If you get in a tangle, don't panic. Just have another crack at it, okay? Worst case scenario, if you've got your machine threaded up right on top and it gets all tangled, just take your bobbin case out. Start again. Little hook, little notch, make sure they're lined up. Hold your little handle so that it'll go in and lock it in place. And it shouldn't move around. It should be in there nice and securely. Hold this thread in this hand, turn your balance wheel towards you, and there we go. It's up. What's broken on my machine is the hook, so I'm, that's why it's a little bit tricky. Flick that up, and on this machine, either I can leave this down if I'm working on something smaller and it gives me a nice narrow sewing bed, or if I'm working on a big piece of fabric and I want a nice flat sewing bed, I can just put that up and I'm good to go. Okay, third machine. This is Mr. Pickling, or that's what I call him. He's my little German tank. Um, the only information I've got on it is it was made in the RDA, which my other half tells me is Germany, 
before the wall came down, or part of Germany, can't remember which bit. Um, it's a pickling, it's a 322, um, and I've googled it and I've looked and I can't find any information on it, at least not in English that I can understand, or French that I can read. Um, but it's a good machine, what I can find about it tells me that it is a semi-industrial, um, and it's a bit of a workhorse. I would guess from the colouring, this lovely brown and orange, it's a 70s machine. Um, and to be quite honest, when I found it next to the bin, I thought, doesn't hurt, I'll have a look, see what it is, see if it works. Um, it needed an oil, it needed a clean, it needed a de-dust. But it works a treat. It works really, really well. Um, the only issue I have is that I've only got that one foot for it so I can't put zips in with it really and it only sews in the middle I can't get it to sew just on one side um, but if I had the right zipper foot we'd be away so what you know, I'm gonna keep looking and see if I can find a zipper foot that, that fits this machine um, but in the meantime and I'll show you how to thread it up Okay, so change your camera angles so you can see what I'm doing. This, like my old fashioned brother, has um, uh, a bobbin case and a bobbin. They're actually different sizes. <clears throat> so be careful that you have got the right size bobbin and the right size bobbin case for your machine. These are the ones that I found in this machine, so I know they're the right ones. Um, but I'm really struggling to get hold of any more of this size bobbin. Um, it might sound daft, but they are literally down to like the tenth of a millimetre. So this one's like 21.1 by 9.8 or something daft like that. And I'm struggling to get hold of them. Um, same as before though, so that your thread is coming off anti-clockwise. Drop it into your bobbin case like this. Down that little slit there. Behind that hook, it should drop a little bit. The tension on that is a little tight. So I'm going to get my little screwdriver here and I'm just going to loosen that off ever so slightly. We're talking like a tiny turn. Um, still a little tight actually. Mm, that's better. Maybe a little loose now, but we'll leave that for another day. Right, I'm going to take off my case here. This one's a little bit tricky to see because it's right in under there. If you want to see a clearer view of this, have a look at the previous video. So, but the basic rules are, pull the arm out, stop your bobbin from falling out, and you've got a little sticky out knobbly bit there. That will fit in to the knobbly bit in here. Okay. That's the bottom half threaded up. It's that simple. I'm doing the top in white so you can see what I do, but ideally you should be using the same colour thread. Now I've got a nice little diagram going on here, um, and it's 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 pretty simple. Round the side, down here, backward end shape through that little loop, through that little hooky bit there. Round my tension dial, and on this machine, my tension dial tension dial is on the outside of the machine, but you always need to go through some sort of tension dial. I'm going to trim my thread off to make it easier to get it through the little holy bit here on my arm if you can't see your arm turn your balance wheel towards you until you can see it you'll find that there's one point where it's easiest to get it through in it goes down through this hook bring my needle back up down there's another little sneaky hook right under here I'm just going to pull it round there. If you've got these funny little hooks on your machine, okay, you don't need to try and thread it through there. You just pull it round to the back and you should be able to get it round to the back. Put your presser foot down to make it easier to thread the machine. Trim the end off your thread. Thread your needle up. Turn the balance wheel, hold the thread in this hand, so turn the dial towards you. You should see your thread pass in front of your bobbin case. 
pull gently, not you don't need to pull too hard. Pull gently and it should just bring it up. Okay, lift your presser foot up, your bottom thread underneath, top thread on top, and put your cover back on. And you are done. Now, this machine, when you are threading up the bobbin, or when you're putting thread onto the bobbin, is a little bit different to the others. My two brothers, I just push them over, and that's it, it's done. This machine, it doesn't work like that. I have to um, I have to loosen another little wheel inside my balance wheel this also you need to take all the thread off your bobbin don't just put another thread on top it it makes the tension dodgy you need to take any existing thread off which can be a little bit of a faff. So unless you know you're going to be doing a lot of sewing, you don't need to throw, fill your bobbin up. Now this machine, same as all the others, round the front, round the back, my threads cross over, wrap it round, Push it across, hold my balance wheel on the outside, loosen the one on the inside, and what that does is it disengages my needle. So my needle isn't going anywhere. What my bobbin is. Now these will stop automatically. So if I just keep going, I'll get to a point where my bobbin just won't turn anymore and that's how I know it's full and all machines do that. Push it over to the side, lift it off, trim my thread, and I'll show you one more time with the bobbin case how to put it in. Thread so it's unwinding counterclockwise. In it goes, through that little slit there, down to the hook, and it's ready to go. Don't forget to tighten up this. Okay, hold the outside, turn the inside as tight as you can. Okay, fourth and final machine, I will admit. I might have brought this machine because it was pretty <laughs> and I wanted another machine for sewing classes. This is a Singer Starlet. If you see something like this hanging around, it is a sewing machine, but they came up with a really nice way of making, this is one of the first sort of portable dress making sewing machines. Before that, a lot of sewing machines were stuck in a table like the Mr. Pickling, it would have been on a table. Um, and it made them heavy and they weren't very portable and this was the first time or the beginning of portable machines so It's got a little sneaky button here. You push that button the top flops down And You can pull it off like this nice and easy And then you see all the pretty flowers that make me smile so it's a Singer Starlet or a Singer 354. Um, missing a needle. What did I do with my needles? Hang on a second. I'm going to go find some needles. Right. It's got a little on off switch here. And I'm missing a needle because it broke the other day. So. On the side, you will have a little twiddly bit there, loosen that off, you get different sized needles for different weights of work and most machines your needles have a flat edge to them, that flat edge goes to the back always, okay, always put the flat edge to the back, 
push it in, hold it with one hand, twiddle it with the other, and that's it. It is that simple. New needle in my machine. <laughs> I had a friend and I tried not to laugh too much when she asked me, she said, the needle broke on my machine. Like, is, is that like fixable? Yes, you should change your needle regularly. Also, the simple, easy way to remember is the higher the number on the needle, the heavier the weight of fabric. A standard needle is 90. 110 is basically denim or anything heavier than that. Um, and you get 70s and 80s, which are for lighter weight fabrics. But as a textiles teacher, we used to wang a 90 and everything. Um, and that is tends to be what I start. I still tend to use a 90 as my standard needle. Um, if you're using a finer fabric, lower number. Heavier fabric, bigger number. Okay, right. Um, <clears throat> this machine, it's quite, everything on it is quite compact because of the way it was designed to be very movable. So my little bobbin, thingamabob, is a pull-up one. Um, and this has got one of these really funny um, tension mechanisms on the outside. I'm going to have a quick camera angle change and I will show you how to get it all set up ready for sewing. I'm going to start with how to get some thread on to the bobbin. Um, this one, hmm, well that's not the right bobbin. I've got a bobbin mixed in with those, that big plastic one's not the right one. Right, but this is quite interesting to show you. Can you see the difference? That big plastic one is a lot thicker and it's flat. This one's metal and curved. You can put the plastic curved ones in this machine as well, but I pretend to quite like a metal bobbin because if I stand on it, I'm less likely to damage it. And well, with a three-year-old in the house, stuff gets dropped and damaged quite often. So I prefer metal if I can use them. Right, I'm going to get rid of that big plastic one because we don't want that. I'm going to see if I've got an empty bob in here. Yay! She shoots, she scores. Right, put that on there. Plop! A nice tight fit. We'll use some nice bright blue thread. Put that on there. Round the front. Like that. Round the back. Wrap it round my bob in. push it over and like Mr Pickling I have to do something at this end to stop my needle from going up and down this one I have to push it like that I think originally there might have been a nice neat little cover on this but at some point this machine's lost it um, it didn't have any of the original stuff with it which would have been nice but never mind it's just pretty right so push that and I hear a nice click press on my foot And it should oh, there we go. What I'd done there was I'd actually just push my bobbin down too far. Um just pay attention, just look at the little details sometimes, that's all you need to do. So before I do anything else, I'm going to put that back down so that when I push my foot on my, on my pedal, the machine sews. Take that off there. And this is a top loading machine. Now I've already got a bobbin in there, so I'm just going to take that bad boy out. Um, and this is probably the easiest one to see how to put this top loading bobbin in. So, thread anti-clockwise, drop it in, 
and there are little grooves here so we're going to go around here to the furthest groove hook it in there and pull it up and you'll feel like a little tug and a little click when it's in the right place right <clears throat> now this is where this one gets a little bit tricky what I ended up doing for this machine was going online and downloading a free manual hang on let's get some better light on this for you it was that was going online and downloading a manual so that I could figure out how to thread it up because this was a little bit of a tricky bugger um, this little bit this little tension dial here so what you have to do is you go around there over the top and this took me a while to get used to your threads up here not done it there we go and it should hook round underneath and spring back up. And I literally spent like an hour or so just practicing that movement. I'm going to do that again for you. So if you've got an old machine with a funny mechanism on the out, on the front out like that and you just can't get it to sew right, this is probably why. You pull it up and round. Push this down. I find that the thread needs to be closest, closest to the machine as possible. Push it down. And when it springs back up, your thread should be coming through there and it should be hooked around down here um, if you're a beginner this isn't a great machine to be trying to use right and apart from that once you've got round that little bit there it's just the same as before so round that loop through here so we're still doing that sort of back to front end shape and if I can find them um, the manual for this I'll put it in the in the blog post through there so through that hook through this hook and thread it up I need my specs for this I can tell drop your presser foot down to give yourself some more space to thread it through if it won't go through just snip the end off and have another crack because that's often all it is. And I tell you what, if you're getting really frustrated with it, go and have a cuppa and come back and have a try again. Okay, so we've gone round our twiddly bit here, down there, through our little arm, down here, behind this hook, behind that hook, through the needle. And all I'm going to do is hold this thread in my left hand, turn the balance wheel towards me, and you should see your thread pass over and catch your other one. Give it a gentle tug, pull both through, close that up, lift your lever to lift your presser foot, put that one underneath, leave that one on top, and you are good to go. Okay guys, well thanks for watching. I've been struggling with lighting this morning because the sun keeps going behind clouds and whatever else, but I hope everything is clear. Um, if it's not, uh, feel free to send me a picture of your machine and uh, and ask me for some advice. Or um, if you want, I'll do a Zoom chat with you or a video chat and we'll talk it through together. But, you, but I have shown you four completely different machines my idea was to try and help you with whatever age or type of machine you had um so that you should be able to thread up your machine um don't forget two key things one is make sure you have the right bobbin for your machine and number two is backwards end shape um if you remember those two things you should be all right and just have a look at your machine see if you can find like a, a diagram on it just to show you or have a quick close look and see if there are numbers marked and follow the numbers um but yes bobbin and backwards n remember those two and you should be all right and if you're not like i said give me a call all right guys get sewing bye